<laughs> we have so many dazzling stories this week, and a dazzling new star on stage and screen. I'm talking, of course, of Pexy McSexual. <laughs> um, ignore that comment. Um, Garrett's just a bit horny at the moment. So. Oh. <laughs> Good thing you're yeah. sitting there, so. <laughs> <laughs> the barrier between, the two, between these two stars. The, the human condom. <laughs> Our first story. <laughs> This is an interesting one, which uh, I'm sure many of the geeks watching and the geeks sitting here will uh, will have a great interest in. Uh, scientists have discovered boffins researching in their laboratories have discovered <laughs> that bullying causes brain damage. Those of you who've wondered why we behave so strangely, this is the answer. Those of you who've wondered why I'm wearing a yellow armband, it's because I'm hip and I went to a cool club last night. <laughs> Rock. Who is, who is debatable, guys? <laughs> Any club that I go to has got to be cool. Sure. Master Okay, so... Okay. Uh, <laughs> this research focused on BDNF, which is brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is uh, one of the many neurotrophics which operate in the human nervous system and cause neurons to grow and proteins be released, leading to changes in neural structure. And uh, what researchers did... <laughs> In the name of science. In the name of science! Was to place a little mouse in the cage every day with a big mouse. That wasn't very nice, was it? It wasn't very nice, and frequently the big mouse would go, Aah! or some other terrifying face and noise combination. We dubbed that in, by the way. <laughs> That's the actual noise of a mouse, accelerated or slowed down to the point of madness. Okay. Um, and the little mice, what happened was, they released lots of BDNF through a certain pathway of their brain, and they literally had changes in their brain structure. Yeah. So when they were that taken out of this horrible, stimulating environment, they weren't sociable to the other little mice anymore. They became kind of the dorks of the mice world, the geeks, if you will. Socially isolated. They had glasses and pocket protectors. <laughs> they were known to wear glasses and pocket protectors and pants to their chins, even though all the other mice had no clothes. Exactly. Very strange. Well, what was more strange is where did they get them? On the internet, of From course. The internet. <laughs> the internet. Oh, <laughs> click, click. They're mice. I mean, They're mice. Oh, oh, exactly. They can already connect it to a USB port. Oh, 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 oh no. my I'm sorry. god. <laughs> so this is many implications. One which is very interesting is, of course, the idea of a chemical imbalance. Those of you who've been to a psychiatrist <laughs> may, may have been told that you have a chemical imbalance uh, if you're depressed or, or schizophrenic. Ignoring the schizophrenic side for a second. What do you ignore, Kayla? Um, this is of course nonsense, you can't have a chemical imbalance, you can be born with a, a different balance of chemicals, but the idea of having an imbalance, it implies that you've been hit with a ray gun in the head or something and it's knocked your chemicals out of kilter. This is a much more rational explanation. So literally, something like bullying or being beaten constantly by your parents or whatever else they wanted to do to your little piney, um, can, could lead to a huge change in your brain and, and how you relate to people. So this, this might explain a lot of the troubles I've been having. <laughs> that's a <laughs> good deep Maybe just weird. Maybe, yeah, that, that's good. Born good. wrong. Born <laughs> wrong. Got dropped. <laughs> <laughs> Repeatedly. <laughs> Oops. We could lead to some uh, interesting new uh, drugs for curing the, uh, the old nerd or, or social. <laughs> Cure your inner, inner nerd. Well, they did treat him with antidepressants. Yeah, they found when they gave the mice Prozac, fluoxetine, as it's known in medical parlance that they became socially active again. Now mice are simpler than humans, and humans presumably take a bit more than a couple of dabs of Prozac to get become the mice they once were. <laughs> <laughs> but you see the idea. So that's kind of interesting. Um, um, I don't know, I that's thought it was it. interesting, but it's still kind of early days in the research. Very early days. Don't take our word for it. <laughs> don't believe anything we say. <laughs> don't actually, yeah, don't believe a word we say. It's all lies, lies, lies. Allegedly. We make it up as we go along. <laughs> I'm going to sue you for saying that. <gasps> Again. Again. Moving on. <laughs> okay, well, this is my first one. Ooh, well, fantastic. They could be applause now. No applause. Uh, uh, one uh, of no. no. Thanks. I like this. <laughs> um, next is uh, luxury car manufacturers. This whole new drive-by night, this night vision thing they're, they're trying to bring out. Uh, 
two of them, the German ones obviously, who else, they're great in innovation. BMW, Mercedes, they brought out a competing one. Um, basically, uh, the two, two competing types of infrared, one's near infrared, Mercedes is the near infrared, and um, BMW's far infrared technology. Uh, I don't know. Um, part of the thing is 20% of, approximately 20% of the fatal accidents, you know, are between midnight and six, so, you know, any sort of research into, into this area is obviously going to be at least of some benefit, you know. Um, I know what's wrong. <laughs> but, <coughs> I actually did have to cough there. Yeah. Oh, it wasn't just to put me off at all. No, no if I went to put you off, I just got this. Ah! Oh! 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 Sorry, Come on, go on. Miss. Keep going, keep going. No, um, comparing the two systems, uh, obviously BMW with its far infrared system or whatever it is. Um, about a thousand feet, uh, so you can see the bends earlier. But um, people appear as very bright ghost like images. That would be kind of freaky, though, wouldn't it? I Especially if they're ghosts. Do ghosts appear like people? Oh, I wonder, yeah. People like ghosts. <laughs> Ghostbusters! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> that would be cool. Though. Maybe. <laughs> Uh, future versions of it, this is kind of, a, I think it's a prototype the all maybe, future versions will have a sort of alarm if, um, for example, something's detected, which is obviously a great innovation, um, you know, everything helps. The Merced comparing that with the Mercedes system, um, shorter range, but seemingly a better re resolution, and unlike the BMW version, it doesn't, the, uh, the brightness of the object doesn't depend on how hot or cold, cold it is. So you so, would, for example, be much, much brighter on the, on the screen than that system. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, yes. Uh, ignoring that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and the display apparently is better placed behind the steering. Well, where is it? It's on the dash behind the steering wheel. Yeah. Yeah. So you wonder. Like, would, like, would you rather heads on oh, the display? Oh, looks like we're gonna crash that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I found that kind of strange that you end up looking away from the road to see what's on the road. Yeah. So you're like, oh, is anything Oh, I don't see nothing. Oh, it's gone blank. <laughs> Uh, there's obviously nothing. Ah! Yeah, the article said it was well placed, so you could quickly glance. Like, oh! <laughs> how quickly can you glance? Yeah, but like, yeah. I mean, he was talking about he was driving on the autobahn. So I mean, if you're driving the autobahn, you're driving like 70, 80, 90 miles an hour. So I mean, you look for two seconds, you've travelled quite a long distance. Absolutely. And like that, you know, that someone killed <laughs> or smashed into the back of someone. That it seemed, someone seemed like a good idea, but. I don't know, the idea of all these accidents, excuse me, are happening because uh, loads of people are getting knocked down because they don't see, you know, pedestrians. I, I think it's a bit ridiculous because most crashes are actually because it's late at night, they've been in the pub, they're pissed, they're drinking, they, they drive into trees. Oh, they're getting a and blowjob job. and they're asleep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Plus people drive more recklessly at night because there's less traffic around. I mean... You know what happens, like everyone, guys driving through towns at like 60 miles an hour at like 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you, you'd have to ask the question though, you know, um, even with the software itself, is it really going to be that good that it's not going to give you a false alarm and, co and actually, by causing that false alarm, actually cause you to crash, you know? It's, can any software be that good, at least at this level? Yeah, this is a feature that they're talking about adding where it'll like beep or something yeah, in, yeah. in the future versions. <laughs> You are about panic, to crash. Panic, you're about to hit something. <laughs> ah, ah, where is it? Where is it? Ah, ah, ah. It's an animal. No, there's Eww. apparently a, a system in a Cadillac tried to bring it out before and the system was so flaky it was always going off. So people hated it, obviously. So it was scrapped. So they're hoping the BMW one will actually... I think they've... I think it's going to be something based on like image recognition, where you can recognize the shape of the human body. You're Versus about to hit Todd. Hey, yeah. Todd! <laughs> <laughs> You're about to reverse over Todd. <laughs> 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 we recognize Ooh, you do it. Wheel burning, wheel burning. <laughs> Finish the job. <laughs> Todd sucks. <laughs> we don't know him, Todd, just to emphasize. It's not about Todd. If you're called Todd, you know, sorry. Uh, yeah, I think uh, it's not going to really improve on like just driving sensibly at night. Because I mean, people just like drive faster 
It's just another line thing. on this thing to show them what's up ahead. It's just another thing to concentrate to you know just divert your attention from actually looking at what's in front of you as opposed to what's nine hundred and eighty four feet in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I thought it was a bit. I thought it would have been cool if it was kind of part of the heads up display. So I mean, it kind of there's a ghostly image and it's kind of reflected off the screen where that person will be. Well, that be cool. So this you like. It's kind of so, so, it's kind so of, like you know exactly where to look for the person who's crossing the road or whatever. And it, like and it, you know, I don't similar know. to like the train track thing, like kind of where you look ahead and it kind of narrows and it gets smaller. Yeah, so it's nine, a couple of hundred feet ahead, and it's about that size. But like if he's fifty feet ahead, he's almost full size. Yeah, exactly. Something so like I mean, that. you know where to look. Yeah, like, I mean, this isn't this technology isn't it's cutting edge anymore. Even in young shops in town, you see windows which have kind of stuck on LCD, which is translucent. So it's like a screen which is a free sticker. Why can't they have this on the window, hit a button on the wheel, and you see the black and white overlay of, you know, night vision or whatever? Yeah, I don't know. They're, they're talking about it. They'll leave high-ross. We should design cars. We should. We should, we should yeah. yeah. I may have said it many times myself. I should, I should do lots of things. Yeah. Instead, yeah. I do this. The only thing is, like, will it cause people to drive more recklessly? <laughs> I'm safe with this car. <laughs> like, if you think about it, uh, I, don't, I, don't I remember reading it once. It's like, people tell me this. Yeah. Just a lie back and do it. You don't need this issue. But if you're driving a death trap versus like a tank, which one are you going to be more reckless driving? You're going to be like, ah, who cares if I run over a couple of people in the tank? I'm still okay. Is that actually a brand? The death trap? I wouldn't buy that. That's even in the name. You know it's going to be dangerous, don't you? <laughs> Dead Trap 2000. <laughs> the new model. Not sure I'll drive that. But extra spiky bits. No doors or airbags. <laughs> yeah, oh, and a that. big sword hanging over your head. <laughs> Buy a tiny piece of dental floss. Not good. Okay, moving and on. I'll stick it out of a steering wheel instead of an airbag. No seatbelt. A sword. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, beer. <laughs> yeah. The next story brought to you by beer. By beer. Oh yeah, me. I've been over you people got lazy. Yes, indeed. Everyone's seen that t-shirt. <sighs> okay. Oh, well. you, you didn't get laid last night, did you? Sorry, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> 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 like, where were you that you knew that? I was under the bed, sniffing. No making tell. Yes, he's been laid. It's like his spidey, <laughs> his spidey sense tells him like tingling. Spidey sense. Spooky sense. Uh, oh, okay, let's get let's get let's move Anyway, <laughs> going to the other side. Moving away. From the this Vatican boat. has rejected the idea of intelligent design, which, for those who don't know, is the whole idea of inserting into the science books that ah oh, yeah, God created the world. Well, the basically, planet. you cross out God and write some higher being. Yeah, some higher being. And well, then in brackets, we, we, God. You, know, you know it's you know everyone's going. <laughs> Yeah, brackets so and the dinosaurs are a big joke too. Yeah, That's exactly. It's, it's, it's all a big joke here. You're tools. Mm. Anyway, the January 17th edition of, I'm going to pronounce this terribly, but I'll give a lash. Anyway, the Suavitar Romano, okay, I, I would have failed <laughs> Italian, <laughs> uh, contain, is, it contains an article that dismisses, dismisses intelligent design on scientific grounds. Now, why is this important? Well, it's important because that magazine reflects Vatican thinking because essentially it's rubber stamped by the Vatican so nothing gets into it unless the Vatican approves it so obviously they think this is you know this is their opinion and there's been quite a lot of controversy because the latest Pope, Pope Benedict he's been kind of flip-flopping about whether to actually support intelligent design or not yeah it's been like Yes, I will. No, I will. Yes, I will. And everyone's like, come on, make a decision. <laughs> so he has, <laughs> seemingly. So the editorial by, oh dear God, I'm going to mess this. Some guy, he's Joe. Italian, I Joe. can't pronounce it. Joe from Verona. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, coffee. Joe from Verona. He's a, he's a bottle of coffee. Okay, he, he, bottles, I know, but he said, proponents of intelligent design improperly blur the lines between science and faith. And what did, did the proponents respond to that? Or yeah, they're all together now. <laughs> all together now. They said, no. Well, it does go along with the recent rulings in the US separating intelligent design from being taught in the classroom. Because Religion there has been a yes, major yes. issue in the US for the last couple of months. That people wanted it to get it into the curriculum in schools and other people were saying, no, separate school and church. 
It's two separate things. If you want to learn about God, go to Sunday school, go to Mass. Exactly. When you go to school, you learn about science and, and things. <laughs> things that actually exist. Yeah. <gasps> <laughs> Ideally, I mean, I prefer to send my kids to a school where they, where they learn about things that exist. It's just a preference of mine. <laughs> I could send them to the other school. Circus school. <laughs> if I had kids. Circus then. school! <laughs> Which I don't. None that you know of. Well, I do. But that's a whole other issue. Moving on. <laughs> that's his cue for me to speak. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, that's for us to... Um, I think, Roland, we should just uh, separate ourselves now from Garth. Stay uh, sad. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I swear. I swear to God. Right. Um, we thought he was joking. We thought he was joking. And then they found the skins. Alright, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, this is getting too weird. Alright. See you. Always in the news. Um, those, those lovely people at the RIA. Another copyright rebellion. Pigopolists. Thanks for that. That's a good word. <laughs> word of the day, Pigopolis. I don't know what it means, but it sounds really good. Um, <laughs> and apparently they've in a, they've changed their tune again. Um, I like that. Changed their tune? I just came up with that. Zing. Zing. I'll be here all week. Um, <laughs> 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 or at least on the way. But, uh, they've decided that ripping your CD to your iPod is going to be made illegal, even though, you know, in a, in a previous one, you know, it's going basically the Change their mind. I can't change their mind. Thanks. I couldn't think of the words. They changed their <laughs> mind. So basically, they decide it's 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 legal until we decide it's illegal, is is what it seems to be at the moment. Um, in a submission to the U.S. copyright offices, they say that the format shifting, e.g. ripping, and time shifting, e.g. TiVo, they infringe on uh, they they do not count as non-infringing uses. And com comparing that to the Brockster case, that's basically in complete contrast to what they went what they said there. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't even know where to begin with that one. It's bad news, like, that you just can't copy your songs that you bought legally in the record store to your computer to just listen to them there. But of course, no shock to us here in Ireland, because it's already illegal. It's already store. illegal. So, uh, wow. And they've also they've got a problem with TiVo, because that's time-shifting. So not only can you not copy your songs to your iPod, but if these crooks and villains get their way, you won't be able to pause your television either. Pause your TV to go to the bathroom or make a cup of tea. Pooing is illegal. <laughs> Infringes copyright. <laughs> <laughs> Said highly constipated or a German <laughs> Jack Valenti. You gotta hold it in until the end of the show. <laughs> they will charge you extra. They will. For every poop. <laughs> for every splash. <laughs> He doesn't know how, he doesn't know what to make of it. Confused. Um, I'm yeah. confused, concerned, love a season. They're just they're just looking for another way to charge you for something you Absolutely. do already. It's just yeah. alright, we'll stop them from copying them from CDs, hence we can get them to buy the same songs again from our nicely expensive music stores because once they make it illegal, of course they're just gonna go, ha 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 it's just another format. Oh they're giving out as well about um what is it? Selling selling your iPod with any tune any music on it. They, there are companies that, that, that's that their do new that. that's their new um, Really? You can go and you can iPod. go and buy an iPod which already has like, Yeah, yeah there, there's a company that does this that loads it up with music before you buy it. Uh, plus uh, today it just broke the news that Amazon are planning to start their own rival to iTunes or the Wall Street Journal has an article from unidentified sources that states that they're going to start this and they're in high level talks with a whole pile of record labels to start their own uh, iTunes like store and they're also going to plan to have their own uh, mp3 player so that and also that you might be able to buy those mp3 players loaded already with songs which you can then Ooh, kind of swap for a, as part of a subscription service so you have it's preloaded with songs and then you say, oh, I don't like this album, it's crap, I'm going to swap it for something else, and it's all part of the subscription service. So, I think the article was saying it was going to come out later on in the year, so who knows, it could be a whole pile of rubbish, who knows. Speaking of the predictions of release dates, our prediction, our exclusive prediction last week for the PS3 release date has been confirmed. <gasps> Sony have come out and said yes. exactly what we said, we so we're talking, what was it, um, late yes. autumn? For the Japan yeah. winter Christmas for US. Sorry yes. about that. 
And next spring, spring of next year, spring for your. So if you were looking for a PSP or PS3, even. <laughs> like we said before, it'll give you time to save. It will give you time to save. Quite, quite expensive. Oh yes, this could well be. You're talking maybe euro. I'm guessing 700 euro or something like that for an all-in system doing the hard drive. That's conservative. Some people have speculated a grand. We'll see. Plus, there has been rumours uh, that I know we're going off topic here, but you can drink it. <laughs> yeah, I, I know we're going off topic, but apparently there was some horrible DR. Well, supposedly there's this horrible DRM in PlayStation 3s, which prevents you from actually just buying a game and then maybe playing it for a while and give it to someone else. So the the game to like kill the second hand market, dead. So yeah, this is the game will only game. ever play on one machine. This is something they're talking about in indignation. Um, yeah. Again, I, I don't, I don't I know, know it's rumour. Yeah, it's, it, I think it's rumour. I know the guys were saying it was rumour, but who knows? Mm. I mean, if they're connected to the net and it registers itself. Well, something they could do is they could have two versions. They could have the P PS3 that you buy if you've got broadband, and the PS3 you buy if you don't. And yeah. then if you've got the broadband one, you just download the games. But you cannot. Yeah, or so. maybe if you ever try and play the online gaming section of it, it'll register itself. Or maybe it'll be like Half-Life 2, which you have to register it just online it. just to play it. Yeah. So, unless you have broadband, you can't play the game, there's no point buying it. It's the old boiling frogs again. Once they get away with one little breach of your liberties and your rights as a consumer, they'll do it again every time. You have an inch and take them Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So don't buy things like Half Life 2 which breach your rights and assume a control over your purchase that you didn't previously have. You know, don't support stuff like, like it. It is a fantastic game. But... I don't know. You know, it's a good game, but I was expecting more. But then I only played the pirated version, so maybe the full version is different. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Needs patching. You can download it out. <laughs> Moving on. That's a joke, by the way. I don't allegedly. Know. Allegedly. Just kidding. Um, the UN have called for a close to the controversial Camp Delta located at the US military base of Guantanamo Bay. About time. About time, some may say. So, in a list of abuses um, brought to the attention, or rather, studied uh, by the uh, UN Committee on Human Rights who, are, uh, who brought out this report. Russell, 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 Russell. Russell, Russell. <laughs> Force feeding of inmates who are on a uh, hunger strike. Uh, interrogation techniques like the use of dogs. Doesn't go into detail, but you know you can only speculate. Right? Speculate, like right? yeah. Lick. He's going to lick you to death. Oh, oh my God! Oh, keep patting him. Keep patting him. Stroke this dog until you feel so him. cute you die. Oh, 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 Look at the puppies. Look at the puppies. They're so cute. No. no. Look at no, no. <laughs> um, I'm sure it's much worse than that. Um, exposure to extreme temperatures, sleep deprivation for several consecutive days, prolonged isolation. We're talking months of solitary confinement. Beatings, kicking, punching, and excessive force, because those aren't excessive force, and interrogations designed to cause religious offence, uh, like scantily clad female interrogators and so on, might seem so offensive, but imagine showing a porn movie starring Jesus and the Virgin Mary. Are you offended? Ah, ah. Oh, oh, oh. You could call it that. <laughs> well, it would be. Mary loses her. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh, Jesus. That's a better time. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> have we offended everybody yet? I think so. Yeah, I think if so. we haven't, drop us an email. <laughs> drop us an email, tell us who you are, are and we will stuff. offend you too. We certainly will offend you too. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this, uh, we don't discriminate in our offence Absolutely not, we hate you all. We hate everybody. Equally. So this report is highly critical of the conduct at Guantanamo Bay, the treatment of uh, prisoners and indeed the existence of the of of an institution for holding people without trial. One of the major things that was criticized was holding on to prisoners for an arbitrary length of time. These prisoners have not had a trial, they haven't had a chance to defend themselves in any kind of open court or tribunal. And uh, so the U UN High Commissioner for Human Rights said while she couldn't support everything in the report, she largely agrees with it and she thinks that there there, there can be really little alternative to shutting down Guantanamo Bay. Uh, <laughs> the United States responded by going yeah. And not really oh, yeah. like, a whole. He cares about you, like. <laughs> Sad yeah, dream. They kind of just ignored him. 
they alleged that the report included only the facts which supported its conclusions, which <laughs> logically is tautological because of course it did. It couldn't include the facts that didn't support its conclusions. Yeah, he, he just yeah, said they were really just like they were it included stuff that before. totally contradicts it. <laughs> and then it, went, it disagreed with itself. Contrary so, to all the evidence you've read in this report, we're concluding this. <laughs> So, uh, and it's, the inspectors did refuse to visit the camp. Inspectors said this is because they would have been followed around and couldn't speak to the kowtowed and tortured by all accounts prisoners independently. Uh, the United States said this is because, presumably, they just really didn't want to see the lovely kind of cushy accommodation PS3s and massage parlors that they have in Club Guantanamo Bay. Ah, oh, Club. Club Guantanamo. I know, I'm going there for my next holiday. Yeah, definitely. Probably am going to try and cross into the United States. <laughs> yeah, probably. Hey, it's a free trip, isn't it? it certainly Actually, is. Actually, yeah. no, your rendition, you might be just like, you'd get a free trip to the airport and everything. Could you know, anywhere. The van will pull up and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> It's good, I'm actually looking forward to it. <laughs> Protecting the world <laughs> from you, guy. In a separate uh, study, uh, two lawyers acting on behalf of Guantanamo prisoners uh, released a report which indicated that, according to uh, Supposedly, according to military sources within uh, the, the United States administration, uh, only 45% of the detainees in Guantanamo Bay were ever involved in any military action against the United States, and only 8% were Al-Qaeda fighters, which really isn't surprising at all. Yeah, well, like... So who are these people? They were, they're essentially seem to be people that were just picked up because they're in the wrong place at the wrong time, and they're being tortured for information. Yeah, but I mean, it's quite possible people are, who are being tortured are just going, give us a name, give us a name, it's like... Oh, I'm in terrible pain. But uh, give me the name of someone I don't like anyway. <laughs> They're going to be here. <laughs> I hate Jimmy. I'm in pain. I might as well give him someone who's going to feel the same pain rather than someone I like. So it's like, oh, I hate Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy, yeah, he's a terrorist. Oh, Jimmy has You've talked about this quite a bit. Haven't you? You've probably got a whole list of Jimmys that you're going to have. <laughs> <laughs> Especially you. little Jimmy. Especially little Jimmy. Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> coming for you, Jimmy. Little Jimmy. <laughs> Oh, terrible story though. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think it's shocking. Uh, yeah. You can also, if you go to our wiki, click on the links. If you're curious about the new photos which have been released of Abu Ghraib prison and the tortures which were done there, we have a link to Salon.com's coverage of those photos. Yes, I think uh, all these things of, like, I don't know where I read it, but a quote from Benjamin Franklin, uh, he who gives up freedom for security will inherit neither. Well said. And I think, you know, words to live by, and I don't think they're going to get this by locking people up without trial and torturing them. Didn't they fo apparently foil a, an attack on LA there a few weeks ago? Apparently. apparently. Yeah. So, where's the proof? And where's the guy who said this? And did, I did, I did, he, did he come in and go, oh, sir, there's going to be an attack? Or was it like, oh I'm my sure god, there's going to be an attack! I'm Please sure stop harassing me! Now. It's all Oh, it's, it's probably classified, classified so it'll come out. Yeah, they'd love to tell us, but it's classified. No, yeah. security. Yeah, that would come out like the reason they went into Iraq in the first place because some guy was getting tortured and he said, yeah, 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 there, there's weapons of mass destruction in there. Just make it stop, make it stop. Because <laughs> that's seriously how it happened. He meant the hammers, but they interpreted it as the weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get away with the puppies, they're too cute. They're too cute. <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> Ah, uh, right. Actually, this show seems to be all about religion and God. Well, this is a really... You're not going to like this if you're a Ooh. conservative, obese, poo-eating Christian man. <laughs> you're not going to like this <laughs> like if, you, if you go to any kind of church. Yeah. It's just saying you're all tools. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, so uh, this is... Uh, the title of this story is Supernatural Selection. So, Daniel Bennett, in his new book... Dennis, dude. Dennis, oh, Dennis. <laughs> Dennis. Daniel Dennis. D D. Like Daredevil. Double D. Except. Double D. Ooh, he's double D. Double D, like double D from the Burton. But you forget it. You know what I'm talking about. But yeah, oh. you. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Anyway, in his new book, Breaking the Spell, Religion <laughs> as a Natural Phenomenon, he argues that human behaviour religion is a human behaviour and as such should be studied as a human behaviour. So, that is essentially saying all this God talk, or Buddha, Allah, you know, tree, spirits, whatever you want, whatever you're having yourself, it's all a load of crap, it's in your head. So, this is not a new idea. 
Marx and Freud both explored the same idea. Religion is the opening of the, the people people. <laughs> Have you heard? I mean, that's what Marx said and maybe he had a point. Who knows? So, Whatever. the book opens by comparing religion to a parasite causing irrational and often inexplicable actions. And the question is, people do these kind of strange and crazy things, going through strange ceremonies and all this, and the question is, who's actually benefiting by like killing cows when like maybe people are starving <laughs> and you're killing a cow and just leaving it to rot? It's like, who's actually benefiting from these actions? So, many people have carried out research over the years into the origins of faith, such as people have carried out brain scans and have done social studies, kind of things like that, just to go, why do people, you know, all over the world, people, there are religions, and why, you know, does this happen, does this arise, you know, is it God, or is it, we're all daft? So, an oldest assumption was that religion is a product of ignorance, so essentially imagine that kind of Stone Age tribe and there's like a volcano or a great natural disaster so they blame it on angry gods who must appease them. Of course this would mean that the more educated people are the less they're going to believe in God so in our fancy technological age you would think that you know religion is dying a death. However most studies have shown that actually the US, the US people are actually more religious now than they were 20, 30 years ago. Which is, I was quite surprised to learn that. If, if this can be believed, it's like, wow. I would have thought, you know, it seems to got more conservative, not less. So, several new theories enlist Darwin and evolution, saying that religion evolved because it gave you a natural advantage, because you were immediately pretty much part of a group. And those who formed these religious groups based on a common belief, they were able to outperform those who didn't, surviving longer, getting to have lots and lots of sex and make babies, and spreading the tribe. <laughs> so, interesting stuff, and definitely food for thought, I would say, you know, especially if you're kind of questioning the whole religious thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's really interesting for three reasons. Um, number one, like Dennis is very famous for having written about consciousness and try to define it. And um, this, what he's doing here as well is also, I would assume, having not read the book, explain how religion in some ways is in something which, like, we're, we're self-conscious, whether it exists or not, blah, blah, blah. But we, we have this thing that we think of as our minds and our perception of the world. So, so we have to deal with that. And that immediately allows us to think, well, we're alive, therefore we're going to die. Existential crisis, ah. And religion gives us an excuse, a way out of it. So rather than Richard Dawkins, who, you know, another evolutionary scientist, who's constantly saying, religion is terrible, true. wake up and realise it's stupid. This guy's going, okay, well, why is it universal? Why is it in every culture? It must serve a purpose. Maybe it's got a whole range of purposes. Let's study those purposes, rather than let's kind of condemn it. Because obviously, from a scientific point of view, it's not literally true, it can't be. Yeah. Religions contradict each other. But um, it obviously has a purpose, and has a use. So perhaps it's even a use we shouldn't mess with. It's yeah. something we shouldn't completely it's... try to destroy. Uh, the same article mentioned that it could also be seen as some kind of business selling a uh, service essentially that you give up your time and your efforts and possibly your money and the collection pay plate on the Sunday and you receive something back so you're part of the community and you receive support say in times of bereavement things like that and the one thing kind of question that I, I kind of realized what it mentioned was that it seems, for some people anyway, it feels kind of this spiritual need and, and no one's really been able to kind of explain that. Some people kind of seek this out, you know, a, a meaning for life, say, and they find it with God or religion of some kind or other. I think a lot of studies have shown that religious people have lower levels of depression and in fact live kind of slightly longer and stuff like this. So yeah. they do find a, a genuine solace which helps with their lives. So presumably it's adaptive. I mean, from an evolutionary point of view, something which gives you even a microscopic advantage, like being tiny amount taller or having slightly more stylish hairdo can really have a huge difference over evolutionary time although hairdos don't survive over evolutionary time so that's just like a really stupid example but <laughs> <laughs> and in fact if you look closely Francis's hairdo isn't even surviving over a short time <laughs> I have asked him quickly yeah I think you're being a bit unfair calling it a hairdo oh, that's, that's true 
Oh, hey, hey, boys, boys. Hands off the merchandise. Look at this, look at this. Boys. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was our last try, I believe. Pimp, pimp yourself. Oh, yeah. Pimp time. <laughs> pimping. This week, I am pimping how to download QuickTime movies. So, if you like seeing those film trailers without actually going to the cinema, because often they're more entertaining than the movies you end up paying good money to see. Often you can go to the Apple website and watch them, but sometimes you want to just take them home and have a look at them yourself. So my first pimp is a link which will show you how to do that. My second pimp is Infiltration, the urban exploration web scene, which is, I found this kind of an interesting idea. It's kind of this whole subculture of people who kind of go out and find abandoned warehouses, just general kind of derelict wastelands and kind of break in and just wander around and break into construction sites. It's kind of strange but kind of cool in other ways, just like, you know, feeding your curiosity and stuff like, you know, you can't really explore a certain parts of the world so they're just going, yeah, just explore your back door even though, you know, my padlocked and mm. big chain fences. It's especially applicable to Trinity because where we're filming at the moment actually has a huge network of underground tunnels going back hundreds of years and people have explored them at various times. Yeah. Again, you must have, you haven't been there. No, I have uh, certain apartments in college, they have entrances that get down into the cellars. How apparently, legend is that? Apparently some of them lead to actually wine cellars which belong to like senior people in the college but no one's managed to. And some wine scaling has occurred over time. Probably, yeah. There was a nice big story a couple of years ago, a couple of lads found a door in their room, opened it up, went down and they were drinking wine for the whole year. But they were caught through being drunk and lying around <laughs> in the passage or something and forced to pay for all the wine they took. Which oh. goes, just goes to show, cover your tracks. They wouldn't have got caught though anyway because I mean, it would, like, they just follow the passage and like it comes out into their gap. I smell wine! <laughs> Unless the boys were like, oh, excuse me sir, well, I'm perfectly clean shaven, clean. Me drink wine? Never! Would you like a glass of Chardonnay? <laughs> <laughs> if you like it, it's yours. <laughs> oh, yes, it's a good brand, <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> Trinity. <laughs> Own brand. Yes. And my third pimp is Classic Commodore 64 Games Online. Now, if you had a Commodore 64 like I did, you played some of your first games in it and it was your first PC. You're also quite <laughs> I still have mine and it works. <laughs> and it works. They're just jealous because, well, they're old. Anyway, uh, <laughs> they don't, some of the games are a bit flaky, the, the controls are, are not that good. You're like, uh, press the game, it's like, how does it work? And you're just bashing the keyboard <laughs> to get things. It's like, <laughs> it doesn't like, normally you'd have arrow keys or something, ASDF, to move around and you're just like hitting it. They're all over the place. I'm like, who did this? <laughs> it's ridiculous. But still, it's like retro playing fun. So, and you can also beta test for them for the new games that are coming out. So, well, if you're interested, <laughs> well, they're mostly the games are abandoned where or copy left. They said I don't know what copy left means, but I know what abandoned where is. It's like Creative Commons. Oh, is it? It's like copyrights that have rights which are more liberating than confining. Ah, so it's left. You learn Ooh. something new every day. <laughs> Yay, <laughs> that's my lesson for today. <laughs> Alright, so, let me do it. I already stole the sheep over there. Went, oh. Oh, no, no. Um, is uh, two, a couple of things. Oh, actually, more than a couple. I'll race through. Okay, first of all, uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. Freedom Downtime. This is an excellent documentary about the hacker Kevin Mitnick. Can you stop shaking your shit? Okay. Um, oh, me, sorry. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like it. Nice. Okay, so this is a documentary about hacker Kevin Mitnick, who was held in prison without trial for a period of one fear, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> one. This is his first. Francis look, 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 he's here only one episode and he's fucking who we can already. Look, 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 fucking disruptive. Keep your pecs in this to yourself. In fairness, this disruptive. Like, when you're working with uh, older people like this, or old people, you know, it's just... It's like a it's home for the geriatric view, isn't it? It, it's is, like it, is, it is community service, yeah. Okay. You don't want to know what he did. I think that he You don't want to know what he did. You can choose something or... His okay. mother fainted when he found out <laughs> what he did to end up with this kid. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Obviously, didn't do uh, yeah. So, moving on. <laughs> Freedom Downtime. Kevin Mitnick, you may have heard of about, about him. He was held in prison for several years without trial. Supposedly, the world's most terrifying hacker stole millions of dollars worth of uh, software, etc. This is a documentary asking what did he really do and what did they do to him for it? So, it's really all about hacking and how it's being repressed and clumped down in the United States, and it's really eye opening. Link to the BitTorrent. Um, it's not actually copy left, but it's produced by 2600, and they're not going to sue me, so this is one, one song you don't have to be afraid. Um, mod your LCD monitor, this is an excellent guide, how to mod, mod your old LCD monitor to give it a really, really cool, sexy, kind of glowing case, it looks amazing, and easily hackable too, so check that out. Okay, uh, page flakes, if you use NetVibes, the RSS integrating front page, uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> What? He doesn't like the eye contact. Okay, if you use net vibes, if you use net vibes, um, and you're like, okay, it's cool, but it looks, it looks like poo, frankly. Um, then try page flakes. It's very, very similar, but it's much more stylish, and it's kind of a few niche features. Um, listable.com, huge, enormous list of Web 2.0 applications which you can vote for. Wikipedia, unsurprisingly, is at the top. But you find lots of applications you didn't know were there. All kind of Ajaxy cool stuff. Yeah. <sighs> all of these again linked from our wiki, uh, which are which is on our linked front of technology. Indispensable stuff. You'll be like, how do I live without this? Obviously, at a slightly slower and less advanced pace. Exactly. <laughs> but probably no less happier than Yeah, yeah but you'd be left behind and everyone else. See, like, don't go. God. They'd be like, crap. God. You're not. You Oh. You're so last year. Oh, you're so last year. MySpace? Oh. Oh. You're on MySpace, aren't you? Uh, yes, I'm on MySpace. Oh, Bebo. Oh, Bebo. Bebo. I'm on Facebook. Come on, give me that list. Facebook's okay. Book. Book. <laughs> I'm sorry, we speak differently from you. Is that funny to you? Yeah, it's <laughs> hilarious, everybody, isn't it? There and finally, uh, a huge list of cool tools. <laughs> You're actually supposed to say tool, what do you say? <laughs> towel. Um, towel. 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 A huge list of tools <laughs> which you can use in Windows XP and NT. Right, that's all. <laughs> um, they look kind of handy though. I looked at that, it was like. And this last one is actually from Guy, he gave it to me. Um, I don't know why, but I needed. Something. I figured he needed it. I needed something to pin. So for all you guys, and I know you're watching. <laughs> Who have str who struggle with the eternal struggle of more than one girlfriend? Yeah. What do you do? How do you juggle them? Are they worth it? <sighs> now Decisions. there's a thing called Girlfriend X, high tech dating software for men. It basically keeps a track of all the important dates. You enter them in, like you know, birthdays, anniversaries, all that stuff. Reminds. We'll even send it. We'll even send a letter or an email. You can like, if if you want to get out of a bad date, you can tell the thing to ring you with a ready made excuse so you can wow. leave the date. Yeah. Rather than just relying on your friend or just like yeah. <laughs> making the thing ring itself and just going, uh, I have to go home. Oh, ring, ring, cat. ring, ring, says my phone. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I have to go home and wash my cat. <laughs> <laughs> I left the bin on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, I have to see about a thing. <laughs> we're checking out for all you Lotharios out there, so. Yeah, and you can enter really. Uh, there's a, uh, there's a. Was reading the article about this. There's a really cool. That's like, there's a company that like they do excuses for you. Oh. There's a company yeah, in England that. that like do excuses. They'll actually like you're off seeing your mistress and like they'll get like all this information. So, say your your wife, then you give your wife like the phone number of this hotel which you're staying in. <laughs> And it actually gets rooted to them, and they're like, "Oh, hello, yes, Mr. Jones is staying here. He can't come to the phone right now because he's, he's in a sex meeting." With his mistress. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. And they do up receipts and all this kind of crap. It's useful though. Useful. Useful. But uh, there's a cool function on this uh, Go for Next program where if you enter, if you say you're dating six girls, and you enter in the exact amount you spent. <laughs> six. <laughs> you enter in the amount you spent on each date and flowers and chocolates and etc. And you put in the sexual acts you've done with each, you'll calculate the relative value of each <laughs> how, how worth how good she is for the money, you know? You can't get better than that, you know? Check it out anyway. She's like, ah she's shite. It's quite quite dear though, I think it's about two hundred and sixty euro. Well uh girlfriend X. 
But if you got six girlfriends, let's face it, you can afford it. So, <laughs> <laughs> probably not watching this, anyway. You probably don't yeah. even have a sixth of a girlfriend if you're watching this. <laughs> As in, she's dating fuck other guys a lot. Well, if you do, I think if they, as long as they know a girl, that's a good start. That's a girlfriend. It's a friend. She's a girl. Okay. <laughs> it's got you into trouble before, I think. Oh, it hasn't. She liked my tone here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, like, while she was asleep. She was asleep. She, she was up. dead. Oh. Not the best. Well, I don't know what <laughs> I tried better. to wake her. God knows I tried. Yeah, you put her hands around her neck and just like, wake up, wake up. <laughs> Squeeze it harder. Wake up. Why is there why is there black water running from her mouth? <laughs> we might we might just have gone a little too far in it. We, where we uh, religion sucks and they're f***ing the dead. Okay, so in next week's show <laughs> In next week's show we, we, we come out of the depths <laughs> and we'll be holy. All good and nice. Actually, yeah, we have a clean episode for Let's change. do that. Let's do the clean episode next. Let's do the clean episode. Let's earn that non explicit iTunes tag. Okay, dude. Say any parting words for our vast audience of millions? We know. We know. We know.